Okay, okay, go. Let's go. He's also here, Freemasons. G'day and welcome back everybody. I'm the Clueless Traveler and this episode we're gonna keep exploring the tropical paradise called Magnetic Island. I got my coffee. Now it's time for the beach. It's gonna be my new breakfast point. Well, we're gonna go off to get our moped and motorcycle today. And we're starting off with those. So, to, uh, to get to that place, it's not so far, just like five minutes on those. And then uh, we head on exploring the island for the entire day. So let's uh, unlock those things and get started. Well, we we're getting towards the moped. Of course, we had to drop off those stupid scooters because they can't go in this road. But uh, apparently the masonry group is also here, Freemasons. Pretty strange place for Freemasons. I guess they show, show up in random places. What kind of secretive, secretive stuff they're planning in here? Who knows, who knows? Yeah. Getting back on the stand, one foot on the side, the oh, right, right. If the dinghy is protected, grab that back. Ready to rumble. <laughs> Keep on going! Keep on going! <laughs> See you later! We are the other side of the island right now. We took a total of 10 minutes to drive. <laughs> but very nice. Because you have to drive sort of over the hill. And that, that part is nice. Nice driving for a motorcycle or for a scooter in even though. So yeah. And then we are at the other, other bay. This is Horseshoe Bay. So later we're gonna check it out. First we have a little refreshment. So here we are at Horseshoe Bay. Looks as beautiful as everywhere else on this island. And they have this uh, fenced off area where you can swim. Over there. So that means that there are no jellyfish that can enter because it's apparently jellyfish season. They call them stingers because they sting. And yeah, they can be pretty nasty. So therefore people can swim inside that uh, squared lining and then you're more or less protected for them. It's also a good moment to just reflect on the fact that uh, I'm traveling with my dad of course. The main purpose of this travel is spending time with my father in the country that he was born and then making memories together. You know it's sometimes you can forget the, the main goal of why you are actually there and so it's really about finding the balance between uh, for me and mostly for him also considering he, his stroke and this is the first time after the stroke we're doing something like this and uh, finding what is too much for him what is okay for him and etc etc so that's also why we are taking two months for this trip so we can take it easy this time take our time you know, don't have to overdo it, we don't have to hurry up every morning and stuff like that. And we're just, you know, finding the balance. There he goes. Into the, into the ocean. <laughs> the man that never swims, he finally swims a little bit. Uh, he enjoys it finally.
Now it's my turn to get into this side of the Pacific Ocean. Because officially it's the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and this doggy wants to play. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, that's nice and warm. <laughs> Perfect temperature. Perfect temperature. I mean... Amazing scenery, just beautiful. Leave that one there. Yep, so one click back. Yeah, so the, we have been driving around a little bit the whole day, and uh, in the meantime, dropped off my dad's uh, mopeds because we're gonna take and keep this one until tomorrow morning, until 12. And we're gonna drive to the West Point tomorrow because it's only a dirt track. But this island is really amazing, like, uh, I really love it. It's uh, great, there, just before there were like 15 cockatoos in one tree or something. They make a lot of noise. <laughs> and after a whole day of driving, it's cooking. Mm -hmm. Easy pasta. Yes. Always. Nice and easy. And tomorrow we go driving again. Have my coffee. And make some dinner for uh, the old man there. Good morning again from Magnetic Island. Every morning I make it now a habit to take a coffee and go sit at the beach. Because how often can you do that as a Dutch person? So, time to get some coffee. It's funny how coffee culture works here. So I, I told them more or less what an espresso macchiato is. Uh, but they didn't really know, of course. Because all the names are different. So even though Australian coffee culture is, is pretty big because of the Italian influence, if you go to the main cities they have all the big coffee machines and, the, and everything, but they call it different. And they all like to have flat whites, which is not really uh, so popular in, uh, in Europe, I think. So if you then ask something a bit different, just or e even just an espresso shot, I mean, it happened to me also that when I asked for an espresso, I got basically a cafe lungo or just almost a long black. <laughs> so, yeah, and they say a macchiato for them is apparently an espresso macchiato, sort of. Whereas if you ask a macchiato in, well, the Netherlands, for example, you just get this very long glass with a one shot of an espresso. I mean, why would you ever stay inside, have breakfast inside, if you can, if you can have breakfast like this? I mean, I can do this every day. It's just amazing, I mean, you just never have this kind of feeling in the Netherlands, 
you know, let's to say, oh, let's have breakfast on a beach or something, or let's have breakfast in this spot. It's like, nah, why? It's not so interesting. You know, maybe in the summer, maybe, but that's kind of it. This is just amazing. I mean, look at how calm it is. So like any other beach in Europe, like this, will be completely filled with people. And just look at how calm it is. So I'm gonna enjoy my coffee and my almond croissant. <laughs> and then uh, go back and uh, we're gonna take the motorcycle again with dad it's gonna be fun and interesting Yeah, so as you can see, we arrived at West Point of the island and on the dirt road. So I left my dad behind in the um, picnic bay area because it's, it was a bit too difficult for him to hold, you know, at the uh, back seat. It's not a lot of room. And uh, he already had sore fingers. And this is actually, uh, it's not that difficult to drive, but it's not easy with two people probably, for him not. So I just had a quick look alone very interesting because you feel immediately you f well you forget basically that you are on an island there's so much bush and trees and vegetation around you that you completely forget that, that, that it's an island it really feels very wild and just look at the quietness around here it's beautiful beautiful quietness and sand beaches amazing and not a lot of tourists come here because not a lot of tourists are allowed to get here by if you take a car I think you're not allowed and if you take a scooter you're not allowed but a dirt bike is allowed so only the people that have a motorcycle license and then rent a dirt bike they can get here or if you uh, maybe if you take a taxi I don't know but yeah that's why it is so quiet look at that it's amazing, it's amazing. Just returned it. If you're gonna rent something, go to this place here. Great people, very nice people, and uh, very friendly. They had a nice puppy dog, and uh, they offered us a ride to the ferry, but we don't need that. I dropped my dad off down the street here because, well, it's not that far, but you know, for an elderly person, uh, it is a bit hot also. So because you have the electric scooters over there and not here which is uh, a little bit annoying sometimes but so I, I just walk and then we take those electric scooters so yeah this was actually quite nice to, to, to drive to the west point as you could see it was a dirt road not that bad but yeah it really really feels like you're not even on an island anymore it's really surprising you know how much because 75% of this island is a national reserve and uh, also, well, claimed, or I think it's in the hands of some original groups. I'm not really sure about that, about the details. So the majority of the islands you can basically not uh, reach. Unless you have a boat and you go around the island to go on the other sort of bays. There are a couple of bays. So some places you can reach by uh, only by boat, apparently. So all the things you see, like... The hills and the mountains, you know, you cannot really get there. It's just a nature reserve. And uh, probably there are a lot of wallabies hopping around there and snakes <laughs> and uh, koalas and stuff like that.
So as small as this island is, they have also fitness equipment openly available for people. And it's luckily in the shade, that's pretty smart. So yeah, my dad is doing some exercises. Then don't lock your knees. Hmm? Never lock your knees. Hmm? Right? Because if it, if, it, if it goes wrong, they, they go the other way. And then you have a big problem. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the first rules, never lock your knees. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, after a month of traveling, uh, you know, you, you, you get your uh, stem, stem in the back. Yeah, you get your Yeah. <laughs> you know, fit as, a, fit as a fiddle. More or less. Yeah. The squeaky old fiddle. Those trees are really impressive because this, all those vines, they turn slowly into a real bast, basically, like a real part of the tree. And the main tree is there. And then all those vines, they slowly turn into proper, mm. proper roots. It's, uh, it's unbelievable how big this is and how much shade this creates. Like such a tree is so important for shade and cooling down. <laughs> all right, you can uh, you can swing around here. Look what we just found! Another cucumber. An iconic bird with an iconic sound. <laughs> Hello, buddy. You can sing for us? Hi? No? <laughs> Not in the mood. So, that, what did you think of uh, the moped and the motorcycle driving? That was a pretty scary at uh, some, uh, some, some moments. Yeah, even on the even on the moped. Yeah, on the moped. Well, the moped was okay, but on the step, the steps are very, very. They're those electrical steps you uh, use. Oh, those those e-scooters. Yeah. Yeah, the electric scooters. Yeah. Ah, okay. But the moped rental and the motorcycle rental was it was quite nice, right? Yeah, it was easy. It was easy. Yeah, it was the first time for both of us for a very long time. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> now we are uh, on our way back to the uh, wallaby point because well we were there before and we saw actually a couple of wallabies but we didn't actually walk the entire thing which is not so much so we're going to see it's, uh, sun it's sunset at the moment more or less so hopefully they come out a bit more and we can enjoy them for the last time because we leave tomorrow again towards slowly ma moving towards Brisbane so this is the cloudy weather at the moment it's cloudy yeah. look at that Oh. Now I miss the clouds. Yeah, that's us. Also part of the tropics. It uh, maybe maybe pours sometimes. We haven't heard it. Well, we haven't heard it yet. Actually, it's, I think it poured once at night once, but that's kind of it. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> doing, doing. They just jump around like that very easily. Over there, there's one on the rock. Well, that's the same one before. Jeez. Oh, we're gonna go this way. Maybe we can find more. It's uh, surprisingly how easy they they come towards humans. Apparently, they are used to getting fat. Hey, hello. Hello, buddy. Hello. 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 Hey. Hello. And then we have another one. <laughs> a 
Yeah, Dougie. Hmm. Yeah, that's a small one. All oh, right. <laughs> They're very small compared to the regular wallaby. Yeah, getting over this. Here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's a little bit slippery. Now you come here. No, oh, you want me to come? Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So choose your steps. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh huh. Yeah, it's just a little bit slippery. Okay. All right, this is also a little slippery. Mm -hmm. All right, well, this would be easy. I mean, just enjoy in one second, admire those huge rocks. I mean, this is just amazing. Look at how massive those things are. Absolutely humongous. And then the wallabies just run through it like it's nothing. <laughs> After taking some quick drone shots, we have this sunset. Don't have to say anything, I think. Beautiful enough. Just like that, easy peasy. <laughs> but yeah, they're definitely different than the ones that are behind our house. They have a darker color and they're also a bit smaller actually, I noticed. They really look like, kind of like big uh, muskrats or something. If you compare it to something like that. But yeah, they're very easy going, <laughs> as long as they get carrots. Good early morning from Magnetic Island for the last time. To the today, to this morning, we're gonna leave. And uh, yeah, I rented a car. So I guess this is probably one of the last times or the last time that we're gonna rent a car. But because all the trains are booked out. So that's something that would not really happen in, in Europe probably. Um, but yeah, here they just have one train basically It goes down and it goes up And that's it for the entire well, day sort of uh, Of course in Europe you have multiple trains that go multiple times a day Also the United States and Japan and whatever So that's a bit strange from that, from that perspective Especially if you consider that it's between big cities. It's not like to a rural area or something. So until Christmas, all those trains to Brisbane are booked out. Yeah. So uh, I at least booked the train from Brisbane to Sydney. I could I could find that, that, that one. So I booked that one quickly. So now I'm just uh, well walking in the streets of Magnetic Island full of life, full of birds, full of everything in the early morning 
it's uh, I really love this uh, it's it's amazing this would never get boring I think definitely a great place oh yeah I, we came across this tree before with this weird pear looking things I have actually no idea what this is they look like little pears It is in a pear shape, but it's very small. Well, I wrote my card and I found the magnet and everything. So, there we go. Post that. And I'll walk back, at least along the beach for the final time. Pack our stuff and get going. And I probably first have to wake up my dad. We are ready to go, right? You had a, you enjoyed your stay here? Yep, sure did. Yeah, it was pretty good, pretty good. You have your whole loft for yourself, or lodge, or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Kitchen and everything. Nice bedroom with an AC, which was very important. So, yeah. Now, Ken, the host, is going to drop us off very kindly. And we're going to go onwards on the ferry back to the mainland back, back to Townsville so, so yeah here we are again at the ferry drop off and after the host dropped us off my dad remi remembered and noticed that he forgot his phone so now he's going back I guess I don't know where he is he is trying to find his phone we made it to the ferry, finally. 20 minute ride with us. Uh, back on mainland. got a car, it's a um, Nissan Coleos. On purpose an SUV this time, so we don't have to worry about surprises. So we're gonna head off to um, Mackay and um, Cape Hillsboro, where you're supposed to be able to see kangaroos on the beach. So let's, uh, let's get and start this adventure. And we are off to our next adventure. I really enjoyed the tranquil and easygoing lifestyle of Magnetic Island. But what did you think? Let me know. And thank you for watching. See you next time.